We're rounding up 10 of the greatest ever examples of trash talkers getting some well-deserved karma today. These are the top 10 epic performances against fighters who ran their mouths in a big way. Billy Joe Saunders really did his best to try to get under Canelo Alvarez's skin. He repeatedly mocked him for vacating his title while asking him openly if his kids were proud of their cowardly father. But if Billy Joe was aiming at someone on his own level or below, it'd make sense that these insults would have an effect. However, as soon as these two came face to face, you could just see how totally unbothered Canelo was. There was an aura of coolness coming from Alvarez that BJ just couldn't match, no matter how hard he pushed. When you got someone that mentally tough in front of you, you're gonna need a lot more than some silly trash talk to get the job done. And Canelo didn't budge an inch. Canelo is a pussy who vacated his WBC middleweight title. A little ginger pussy. Pussied out. Pussied out and just vacated. In my eyes, they are both little pussies. And if they got children, their little kids must look up to them and think, Dad, what a complete wanky you are. Never been in a ring with someone like that. What this are? You've not seen nobody with this are. Thank you. Walk away. Walk away. Yeah. 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 I haven't lost since 2008, 13 0 and unbeaten. So therefore, oh, he has to do something different, do di differently to beat me, not the other way around. When the time came to back it all up, Canelo was the guy who was ready to step up. And unfortunately, Saunders just didn't have the skill to get the job done. This fight was yet another feather in the cap of the great Canelo, a bruising performance that still had all the trademark finesse that we've come to expect from him. It was totally dominant. Saunders definitely showed his quality in moments, but in round eight, Canelo managed to damage him badly, causing an injury to his eye socket that caused terrible swelling and the fight to be called off before round nine began. Sure, Saunders didn't technically quit, but Canelo broke him in there physically, leading to the TKO, and a well-deserved one in my book. If fights were won and lost on the microphone, maybe, just maybe, you could see Blair Cobbs getting his hands on a world title. The dude was competent and well-spoken, you gotta give him that. But man, when the time came for him to back up his words, he was shown to be very limited. During the bout's buildup, he spoke with the confidence of a world-renowned superstar, comparing his head-to-head -head record with his opponent Alexis Rocha while showing absolutely no respect for his skill set. Now, in his own eyes, he was going to be a walk in the park, a chance for him, Blair the Flair Cobbs, to show the world he was ready for the next level. Or at least, that's how he was billing it. So when I put these young fighters in the fire with me, they seem to just not look the same. Look, he's only been tested one time and he failed one time. What happened when he fought, um, what, Brad Solomon? Oh man, he almost lost that fight. What happened when Brad Solomon fought me? With more than two months notice in training, we got the job done. What round? I don't even know. Maybe six rounds. He, 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 he struggled with Ortiz, with Cervantes. What happened in that fight? He struggled, I got the job done within six rounds. I'm so busy just whipping ass all day that like, I don't even have time to, to just finish this fight. This fight's not gonna go the distance. Thank you, Alexis, for talking shit because you have ended your career fucking with Blair to Flair. We're gonna shut this fight down early, baby. I ain't going nowhere. There ain't no running, ain't no hiding, there ain't no pity pat shots. This is gonna be fight. A war going on, baby. Why? Because I'm great and I'm born for it, baby. I'll show you everything I got because I've been ready. Come from the streets of Mexico, what you think I got? But as it turned out, Cobbs had an arrogance problem and these skills that he seemed convinced that he had just didn't show themselves on fight night, not at all. Rocha didn't need to talk that much ahead of this one. And looking back on it now, it was easy to see that Cobbs was compensating for his lack of talent. Unfortunately for Cobbs, he wasn't quite as good as he thought he was, or at the very least, Rocha was clearly much better. And after beating the brakes off his cocky opponent for the majority of this fight, things took an ugly turn in round 9, 
when Cobbs was too dazed to properly defend himself. And from there, Rocha was able to easily move in for the kill, landing shot after shot on his wobbled opponent until the ref decided to put him out of his misery and call this bout off as a clean TKO win. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you deal with an overly cocky and arrogant trash talker. When revered figures like Muhammad Ali are telling the world that Michael Spinks is about to be the toughest challenge of the young Mike Tyson's entire career, you sit up and pay attention. Throughout the buildup of this fight, Spinks had an incredibly calm and collected air about him, seeming totally unbothered by the idea of taking one of the hardest punchers in the sport. In his own mind, Spinks had already fought and beaten big hitters, and he'd never once hit the canvas by way of a knockdown. So. Why should he fear this young and inexperienced puncher? Surely when it came down to a game of technical skill, Michael Spinks would be the one who reigned supreme. Tyson's energy throughout this fight's buildup was his usual brand of intense but short-spoken, whereas Spinks seemed to be enjoying his time in the spotlight, trying to come across as the wiser, more capable fighter. I have been hit hard by some heavyweights. Found no pleasure in it. Here, that this is love beyond compare. The man is, is, I mean, is not cooperative at all. He's not going to stand there and let me just wail away at his, you know. Um, whatever he does, I'm confident I'm, I'll be successful. Um, I'll say, honestly, that uh, it, it feels good to have some terror in my life. And something to, that, that really frightens me. Well... I'm, it's just the majority of it, everything is just bullshit. I just want to fight and as soon as possible. <laughs> you can you can always have your doubts and and uh, you can even say to yourself that you I don't I don't think I'm going to win. Win, win, win. But he was about to learn just how badly things can go for you if you make the mistake of underestimating a fighter like Iron Mike Tyson. Well, if Spinks was supposed to be a tricky matchup, no one told Mike, because on fight night, he managed to run through him like he wasn't even there. The first knockdown came when Tyson landed with a murderous body punch in close. And as soon as Spinks got back to his feet and tried to reset, Tyson put him straight back down again with a brutal knockout blow. One round, two knockdowns, and yet another challenger swept aside with little to no issues for this young champion a devastating display of power and accuracy. You gotta give it to Jarrell Big Baby Miller. The dude knows how to sell a fight. You really can't argue with that. But his habit of raising the stakes against his opponents can really get him in trouble when he eventually pushes too far, lighting a spark in his rival to truly punish him on fight night. And that's exactly what happened when he took on Daniel Dubois. Miller just talked and talked and talked some more taking shots at Dubois from all angles and promised him and his fans that his own physicality would prove to be way too much for his opponent to handle on fight night. Big Baby is a big guy, there's no doubt about it. But Miller seemed totally certain that his size and his heart would be enough to get the better of Dubois, who he repeatedly tried to paint as little more than a coward in comparison to him. Did he actually believe what he was saying? Thank you, Daniel Dubois, for being the dummy to sign the contract because I'm going to beat your ass. Um, listen, man, proof is in the pudding. When I, I talk that shit, but I back it up every time. So was it kickboxing or boxing, I'm going in there and I'm going to rip his head off. You know, it's the same we have in New York. I mean, if you don't like Vogan, let's cover your ear. We smell bitch in them. And once the bitch is in you, it ain't going nowhere. Quit against Joy Joyce. He got beat up and knocked out by a jab by Usek. And those are small guys. I mean, Joy Joyce is big, but he ain't big baby big. So I'm telling you something, when you find a mean guy like me that's throwing 80 punches around, got a good chin, don't quit, come forward, I'm kicking his ass and I'm sending him to early retirement, plain and simple. Man. If shit had a twin, it'd be his face, it's plain and simple. I mean, listen, bro, I, like I said before, we can talk the talk and walk the walk. I talk and I back it up. So he thought because I'm inactive, he gonna fight a big guy like me, but I come forward and I'm just mean, hungry. And like I said before, there's nothing he's gonna do to me that's gonna bother me. I'm going to hit him with everything in the kitchen sink, and I'm going to send him back to his train, and I'm going to tell him, I told you so. So listen, plain and simple, come December 21st, I'm going to kick your stuttery ass. Watch. Who knows? But Dubois certainly remembered it as he let his fists fly in the ring. 
On fight night, Dubois let Jarrell Miller have it, putting on a great performance over the fight's runtime before turning up the heat in the dying embers of the bout. And with the clock ticking down, Miller was exhausted and thoroughly beaten, eating shot after shot with very little defensive capabilities, until the referee moved in and stopped Miller from inevitably hitting the canvas. Dubois had proven that he was clearly the better fighter, and all that trash talk from Miller amounted to very little when it mattered most. Batterhari is a true icon of the ring. But man, was he annoying as a younger guy or what? When he took on the veteran Peter Graham, he went totally overboard in his attempts to rattle his more experienced opponent, losing all sight of pre-fight respect or honor. In fact, he nearly kicked off at least one riot during this media week. Hari knew that he had to maximize every opportunity in front of him to become a star, pushing Graham's buttons in hopes of leading his rival into an eventual mistake on fight night. Hari seemed to have it all figured out and was honestly doing a really good job at drumming up interest in the fight. Everyone loves to hate a guy who could play the villain role, right? Well, his dream statement victory was unfortunately outside of his reach at this point. In fact, he was about to get embarrassed in the most shocking way possible. I see your tape, I see you fighting. You look like an amateur. Something else. How old are you? I'm 30, man. Okay. Drop dead. Oh. Look, Badahari is a great fighter and a legend of the kickboxing game, but he probably needed this slice of humble pie before progressing any further. Graham timed him perfectly for his signature move, the Rolling Thunder nailing his young opponent perfectly for a huge knockout win. And this shot didn't just stagger Hari for the TKO. No, this put Batter out cold. A clean knockout win that probably hurt his ego just as much as it broke his chin. Who the hell is Phil LaGreco? Well, this wasn't an unrealistic question to ask prior to his collision with Amir Khan a few years ago. But during their fight week, pretty much the entire boxing world united in their desire to see Khan destroy this guy. Well, Greco had the vibe of a guy who knew that this was his one shot at being famous. So he poured everything into his pre-fight trash talk, pushing Amir's buttons to the point that their press conference almost turned into a brawl when Phil brought Khan's family into things. Was that a dirty tactic? Absolutely. But the fight was certainly building up some decent hype. And who knows? Maybe LaGreco's tactics could eventually create a gap in the aging Amir Khan's armor for him to exploit. I'm talking, please listen. Just listen, just listen to what I'm about to say. After the Canelo loss, you went on a losing streak, family, wife, then... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, guys, guys, this is not Pakistan versus India. It's not a cricket match. Please, please. And then you go out and you tweet to the heavyweight champion of the world. What is wrong with you, mate? What is wrong? You go out and you tweet to the heavyweight champion of the world that he can have your left arms? But if you're like us and came into this fight praying that Amir Khan would rise up to the occasion and shut this persistent trash talker up, well, you'd be happy to hear just how easy he made it look. Khan came out with a real point to prove, putting the pressure on LaGreco immediately and finding his chin within 15 seconds, dropping him to the canvas and leaving him with a real look of shock on his face. It took him just another 20 seconds to put LaGreco down for the second time, ending the fight in a rapid 40 seconds for a truly huge statement victory. Mike Tyson had been locked up in jail for years, waiting for his release and his opportunity to resume his boxing career. And despite having lost valuable years of his prime, his road back to the world title needed an opening opponent. A fighter who was magnetic enough to get the fans interested, but beatable enough to make Iron Mike look good no matter what. 
And so in stepped a surprisingly confident Peter McNeely, who brought a real underdog mentality to the proceedings, calling out the crowd for laughing at him while reciting a poem he'd written that would sum up his eventual defeat of Mike Tyson. McNeely certainly had a colorful personality, but could he actually fight? And why did he seem so determined to let all of us know that he didn't fear this version of Mike Tyson, a guy who'd been sitting out of competition for over three years? Keep laughing, keep laughing. You're real funny, huh? If any one of you doesn't respect me or what I'm doing or what I've been doing for the last three months since it's been announced, and going against a guy like this, you'd have a big dump in your pants. I'm Hurricane Peter McNeely from Medfield, Mass. On Saturday night, watch me kick Tyson's ass. But if you haven't made your pay-per-view arrangements yet, make them soon. Because remember what happens when I wrap you in my cocoon. Patterson, back in 1961, lost that fight. Now Peter, his son, fights. Peter, we have you for just a moment before you go out into the ring. Your thoughts before you get in with Mike Tyson. This is for my grandfathers, my grandmothers, my father, my mother, Curly, my three brothers, last but not least, Snobby. Mr. McNeely, what was it that you have told your son? And last but not least, Medfield! Well, despite McNeely's best efforts to paint himself as a fitting rival to Tyson, this version of Iron Mike was hungry for blood, and it didn't take him long to start putting a beating on his overmatched opponent. McNeely was out of his depth from the start, and within the first 90 seconds, Tyson had already put him down on the canvas twice, forcing his corner team to step into the ring and get their fighter disqualified. Their own way of throwing in the towel. McNeely had underestimated just how much firepower Iron Mike still had, and it cost him dearly in the end. Shannon Briggs is a classic example of a guy who truly seems to believe that being the loudest fighter out of you and your opponent makes you the most confident looking. Seriously, this dude just can't shut the hell up as soon as the cameras start rolling. And that's what made his rivalry with the Klitschko brothers so hilarious. Because if you know anything about Vladimir, and in this case, more importantly, Vitaly Klitschko, you'll know that they're not too bothered with trash talking or huge displays of bravado. Now, these technical masters are content to let their opponents sell the fights before swooping in and frustrating the hell out of them with their pinpoint accuracy and excellent defense. Briggs really tried his hardest to get under their skin, raising every possible dial all the way up to 10 in hopes of making Vitaly crack under the pressure. But in the end, Anyone who wasn't just a casual boxing fan knew what Klitschko knew. And when push came to shove, it would be the boxing talents of the Ukrainian champion that came out on top in this one. Briggs had his mouth, but that wasn't going to help him inside the ring. And in some way, we think Shannon knew that as well. Right now, my, I train here too. I train here too. My stuff here, not chill, son. Chill. My stuff here. My stuff here. We can do it. What about you? What you talking about, boy? What? 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 Yeah. Make me eat it. Make me eat it. Make me eat it right now. Make me eat it right now. Tell me, make me eat it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all better know. Y'all better know. Shannon Briggs. Look at him. Oh. Don't touch me. 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 Look, hey, don't do that, champ. Don't do that, champ. Hey, don't do that, champ. For real, don't do that, champ. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hands off. Don't do that. Don't you ever touch me like that. Don't you ever touch me like that. What's up, champ? I told you. Anywhere you go, I go. 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 Anywhere you go, that ever did it. I'm asthmatic, two-time heavyweight champion, and that's mine for Saturday night. And nothing can happen. And nothing. He can't beat me. I'm already, I already, I already died ten times. Now you're fighting a man. Those are kids. A natural man. A man. A man. That's right. A man. You ain't never seen nothing like me. 
You ain't never seen nothing like me. You ain't never seen nothing like me. The first and only asthmatic heavyweight champion in the boxing history. Don't touch that. 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 Take it easy, daddy. Take it easy, daddy. Take it easy, daddy. You know I don't play that. You know me. You know me. No, no, it's not. You gonna make it over? No, it's not. Like I said, I'm the best ever. Never was, well, one, once was a heavyweight champion in the history of boxing with asthma, a disease that people die from every day. You heard what that man said? Please. Darf ich ihn noch mal kurz berühren und dann darf ich ihn erst wieder am 16. berühren. Touch it now. One more time, like you did before. Touch it. You forget the snow. Touch it now. You forget the snow for the beauty competition. Touch it one more time, and I'm going to get more energy. Go ahead. Touch it one more time. Tell me, it's changed now. Tell them, it's changed now. It ain't the same stomach. On fight night, we got to see just how many levels there were between Klitschko and Briggs. It wasn't as if Shannon was entirely out of this fight but he was on the receiving end of a pretty comprehensive beating. All that pre-fight trash talk just didn't translate into actual fighting skill. Now Klitschko was faster, more accurate, and way more prepared for this fight. And Briggs was forced to learn a very valuable lesson on the world stage about biting off more than you can chew. Simply put, Klitschko schooled his opponent on the finer points of boxing technique. If you watch this channel enough, you know that we just love watching extremely cocky YouTubers get forced to eat their words by another YouTuber who wouldn't last a round against any semi-decent pro. But in this case, our number two pick is one of the all-time greats, a truly annoying specimen by the name of Ginty, who managed to bring us all together in the hopes of seeing him get laid out by his opponent Faye's temper. Man, this guy is annoying. And who knows, perhaps he's got a certain level of charm that only comes through when he's making money on YouTube. But as soon as he opened his mouth prior to his clash with temper, we knew which way our money was going. The trash talk was awful, the delivery even worse. And it just didn't appear to have any effect whatsoever on his opponent's confidence, which, as you know, is kind of the point. No, this dude was setting himself up for an almighty failure. And we're glad to report it was worth the wait. I hope you're ready. You're going to get knocked out, buddy. Saturday night. Clock is ticking. Getting slept for the third time. You silly boy! I've put in the work. I've never been this confident in a fight. Like, I've put in the work, so I know what I can do and what I will do. So what's your prediction? Uh, round two, knockout. I, I feel like the one advantage I have over this guy, his weak chin, you know, he's been slept twice. Yeah. Buddy, I'm gonna hurt you on Saturday. Uh, I'm you're hurt you're on so Saturday, boring, bro. you have no personality. I'm so boring. What You've about your last fight? fight what what about time? your last fight? You've not promoted this fight this whole time and now on fight we're I've just been... spamming the promo button three, four days away. You've been quiet this whole time. Bro, and you've been promoting you have on no what? personality. You've been promoting on your OnlyFans, what you mean? Okay. Fucking weirdo. Okay, cool. You're still gonna get slept for the third time, Ah, uh, yeah, we'll see it, bro. Okay. Your pillow for when I'm gonna put you to sleep on Saturday night. Okay, you're gonna need this. I'm excited to put his face on the camera. I can't wait to crack your glass chin. Bro, you ain't cracking nothing, bro. I am. I'm gonna send you, you into a retirement. You're gonna throw a jab and then you're gonna get I'm caught. I'm gonna send you into a you know How are you gonna come back up. after being slept three times? Yeah, I'm gonna hurt this little boy on Saturday. You're not, though. You know you're not. You got pillow fists. What I'm are you gonna you do? Saturday, you can't punch bro. for shit. Yeah. Okay. You can't punch. We're gonna see. Oh my god. I'm gonna hurt you. I have the power oh here. Oh my okay. god. You, when you feel this right hand, you're going to sleep. You see Halal Ham? You ain't got no power. You see Halal Ham? He got back up. You're okay? weak, bro. He's tough. And you're Unlike weak. you. And you're weak. It's all right. Listen, when, when you go down, okay, you're not getting back up. I ain't going down. You are. I'm locked in. I'm ready, man. This guy's in my way. I don't care. Call me the underdog. I'm gonna f him up. I'm putting on the clinic tomorrow, bro. He's gonna eat his words. Uh, shout out all the people. Look, we don't always have such strong reactions to seeing a trash talker getting absolutely demolished on the big stage. But in this case, we loved every second of FaZe Tamper's mauling of Ginty in the opening round. Ginty didn't have an ounce of solid boxing defense to fall back on, and so when the punches started flying, he caved. Multiple knockdowns eventually led to the ref stepping in and calling this one off entirely. And finally, we come to the number one pick, a legendary moment of trash-talking failure that will likely still be playing on the regular decades from now. Who knows if James Gallagher will ever work his way into title contention? Because if I'm being totally honest, he's a pretty decent fighter 
and a really solid grappler who gave a good account of himself in there with the current champ Patchy Mix not too long ago. But when he took on Ricky Bandejas, he got a well-deserved beating that forced him to really take a long, hard look at himself. Growing up alongside Conor McGregor in Ireland is going to have some effect on a young fighter. But man, James Gallagher got hit hard by the McGregor bug, emulating his teammate way more than he should have. And he just lacked all the charisma that made Conor, you know, likable. Gallagher seemed totally one-dimensional in comparison, and his attempts to be threatening towards Bandejas fell flat whenever he tried. Yeah, this was a dose of karma that he desperately needed and fully deserved. And the end result here could not have been any sweeter. And sure enough, James was exposed as a McGregor wannabe pretty early, when his attempts at channeling his fellow Irishman fell apart almost immediately. Bandejas tagged him hard on the feet early, staggering Gallagher before sidekicking him in the face to score the finish. This was an insanely unique knockout technique, and the fact that Ricky felt comfortable attempting the shot tells you everything you need to know about what he thought of Gallagher's striking skills. It's one thing to try to talk like Connor, but showing up and producing the goods is another challenge entirely.